Hi, everybody. I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And, and we're, we're the, the streeters. streeters. Welcome to the RDRV live stream Q&A tonight, where we attempt to answer all your questions about stained glass. Any questions at all, or any, just glass in general. So we're happy to have everybody on board tonight. It's Monday night, and it's 7 o'clock. Woo, 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 woo. So we're going to start off with the uh, Q&A, and then we're going to have glass chat. And we'll have a little glass demo. And then um, later on, we have some news we want to share with you. And we'll come back to a few more questions if they, if you have a few more questions. Sure. Okay. Let's see what happens. And um, hope everybody's doing well tonight. Welcome again to the RDRV channel. Okay. And we're trying to um, stream on Facebook and they're sending me a message saying I, they can't do it. So let me check right there and check it out. And you guys, um, if you can uh, write in your questions, that would be awesome. Yeah. So just put your questions right there in the chat box and we will, uh, Barb will pick them up and uh, read them to me. And we'll try together. We'll try and answer your questions about your glass. Maybe you have a little problem or maybe you don't have a problem at all. Maybe you just want to know a little more about this fascinating, fascinating medium that we all work in. So I'm not going to wa worry right now about the uh, Facebook feed. I have no idea what's going on. That's something we just wanted to add. Uh, it looks like it's not going to come through. Okay. Well, you know what? We'll, we'll catch up with it. We, we <laughs> it wanted to try matter. it this week and and it's just not going to work. So I we're think good. the RDRV channel, though, I think the RDRV has uh, the feed. It looks like the only the Conway Glass didn't go through, but the RDRV did. So that's great. Yeah, that's great. Well, hey, welcome, everybody, to the RDRV channel tonight. John Golden's here. John, we hadn't seen you in a little while from Kansas. Yeah, hey, John. Me and Mike P's here and CM's here. Hi, everyone. It's good to see everyone. Welcome to the RDRV Q&A. I hope everybody is having a beautiful spring-like day because it is on the way. The pollen is thick in the air, everybody, and your glass and your car are covered with it. Yeah, well, <laughs> we try. I, Ed tried. He said he cleaned my car off. Well, I just rinsed it off. it off. You know, hose it. No, for that, some reason the pollen is on there like glue. It is way. I mean, thick. he did clean it, but the pollen is on there. Like yeah. So, so I told Barb, you know, we just have to. You have to wash. You have to wash it. So. Um, but if y'all have any questions about why I'm always looking down here, I'm looking down here to see your questions and right. to see if you have any comments. I'm not trying to ignore you or be on Facebook. No, or I'm trying to pay attention to you because my eyes want to go over here and help Barbara, but I, it it doesn't work that way. It's much easier for me to look at you and say hello with a big smile, spring smile. And Barbara can read me the questions and we can move forward with all of our Q&A for Monday night, the 21st. Okay, Ed. Of March. Okay, Ed. Okay, Barbara. Okay, Ed. I How had a doing? question. I had a question. How important is it to leave a gap between adjacent foil pieces? Should uh, This is a question from Gary Wright. And um, he said he wishes you a speedy recovery, too. Thank um, you, Gary. Well, on my way. Thank you, way. Thank all, you Gary. The, Appreciate it. For the nice letter as well. And um, <clears throat> how important is it for him to leave a small gap between adjacent foil pieces? And should he think of it similar to the heart of the lead cane? Well, with copper foil, the answer to that would be, Pretty much no. You don't want to leave. You can leave a small gap, but I'm sliding. I'm sliding this out right here on camera number two, and I just want to show you. I've got this. Okay. I've me, got this. I'll get it there. I've got this on a yellow paper, so you can see it, and it's an iridized piece of glass. So what? What you don't want to see is this. You, if you look at the gap between these two pieces of glass here, you see that yellow stripe down the middle. You don't want that. That's going to, you know, solder is $29 a pound right now. So we don't want to, what we want to do is we don't want to see th that gap right there or, or any gap like it. What we want to see, we're going to move this out of the way. What we want to see is this gap right here. You see that? Absolutely. Yeah, that's much better. That's much better. You're going to use a lot less solder 
And again, it's $29 a pound. Most of you have probably bought a pound or two in the last month. So you know how expensive it is. Show that again. Okay. So what we don't, what we don't want is this. Okay. See that yellow stripe right down the middle of my kayak? You know how much solder it take? Take a half a pound of solder to fill that up. What we want it to look like, and we should want all of our pieces to look relatively close to this, is that right there, everybody. Okay. That's what we want. You can't see any yellow paper through there coming from Ed. This is how I would prefer you learn how to cut your glass correctly. Hey, that's a good question. And fortunately, I just took a half of a kayak that didn't belong to this half of the kayak. <laughs> and I, But I could show you and you could get the gist of how it's supposed to be. So thanks for the great question. It's awesome. And you guys' questions sometimes, you know, you make me think, but I hope that our answers help you move forward. Okay, Ed, we have another question. Uh, uh, Susan B says, great haircut, Ed. Oh, hey, I lower my ears. Got that Joe College look. I uh, love the haircut, Mr. Ed. Magali said, uh, yeah, he looks great, doesn't he? Uh, okay, so you, now <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get to the question. All these haircuts, haircut congratulations. I didn't know anybody <laughs> would notice. <laughs> we noticed. Okay, let's see here. Um He has, Pat said he has every alarm in the house going on so he could watch the show. Oh, oh hey, good. Pat Co. Good to see you, That's my friend. That's the way to do it, Pat. I'm telling you. That's it. You got to tell everyone how you do it so they can remember. Okay. I'm trying to get to the questions that we had a question about uh, talking about the different the copper foil sizes, the difference in the foil. Oh, and they, sizes and what types for what type of glass? Well, you know, here's the thing about um, <laughs> I, I'm kind of I'm kind of stuck in my ways. Uh, you know, most of your glasses are are an eighth of an inch thick. Some of them are three thirty seconds, which is a thirty second of an inch less than an eighth of an inch. However, I found over the years that the seven thirty second foil is a really good size foil to use for almost everything. Now, when you move into your textured glasses, you move into your, your wavy glasses, those glasses all, because you want them to look uniform, those glasses all look just a little bit better if you'll go, now we're gonna jump from 730 seconds to a quarter of an inch. It's again, it's a 32nd of an inch, y'all. However, it's going to make it easier for you to cover your textured glasses, your wavy glasses. All of those glasses are a little bit different. Now, if you're going to be doing decorative soldering, you'll want to accent some of your foil with the scalloped edge foil, or you may even want to use some 5 16 or 3 8 copper foil if you're making like, uh, let's just say you're going to have a clear piece of glass, dried flowers in the center of it, and then you're going to put another clear piece of glass on it and then foil it. For that particular thing, you want to use a minimum of five sixteenths of an inch. And if you do it in the scalloped edge, you can decorative solder all around the edges of those flowers bef after you put it in the, in like, for instance, it may be a box lid. But you can change up your foils. It gives you more uh, balance in your window, I would say, and also gives you better coverage on the heavier textured glasses. So that's a good question. And, you know, I think there's only, uh, there might be about eight different uh, foil profiles, but, uh, you know, Venture makes all of them, and I prefer to use the black back foil whenever I can. Oh, hey, that was okay. a good question. I'm sorry. I might have bored everybody with the answer. You didn't but... bore anyone. Okay. That was good. That was a good question and a great answer. Okay. So do we have any more questions? I'm going to go back through. Uh, didn't know if we had any questions from the Facebook group or not. Do you use a foil machine or do you hand foil? I personally hand foil. However, 
I, if I got a lot of pieces of foil, that machine gets screwed to the top of the table. And if Barbara's helping me foil, she prefers to use the foiling machine. So if we're working on a project together, which here lately, we've been working on a lot of projects together and y'all believe it or not, it's just really a lot of fun. So anyway, um, Barbara likes the foil machine. And if we're foiling a bunch of pieces, that bad boy gets screwed to the table for Barbara or I. So yes. Uh, but most of the time, you know, for a small box or something, we'll hand foil it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For a few things. Just, just a few things. It. A couple hundred pieces though. Guess yeah. what? That machine is out. Yes. 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 So uh, I hope everyone had a good week. John Golden says it's wet in Kansas. Oh, and, yeah. And um, I saw some couple comments about how beautiful it was where others were. Uh, what? Okay, here's a question for from Abby. Hi, Abby. I haven't started yet, and I don't know where to put my money. What should I invest in first, and where should I start as a baby beginner? Okay, Abby. Well, that's a good question because you know what? We were all baby beginners at one time. So the first thing you want to do is, <laughs> and I happen to have them sitting right here. Yeah. The, the first Very thing cool. you're going to want to do is get, let me look down here and see if I have something else. I don't think you that I do. Swear. But the first thing you're going to want to do is get, is get a, a basic toolkit. Okay. And that basic toolkit your money is going to fall in. And these are tools that you're going to buy and you'll probably never have to replace them if you take care of them. So you're going to need, you know, your basic toolkit and you can look on our website because we have, we have your basic toolkit that includes everything but the grinder. We're leaving the grinder up to you because that's a very specific item. And we feel that instead of us, you know, we, we would, uh, recommend an inland grinder, shop around. but shop around. Yeah, because you never know. I mean, we could list a grinder on Amazon and at a good price, and two days later it's gone. Yeah, and then so and, shop around. Right, that. so we don't want to do that, but we do. We've got a really good price on a basic toolkit with all of your pliers and uh, your glass cutter, your soldering iron, your rheostat, things like that. Okay. But so, her question is, what does she, and, and let me put that up real quick. The uh, So your basic tools, you're going to, you really what you should spend your money on is okay. your glass cutter. So if you go to RDRV, call my glass backslash RDRV, that, that little toolkit is there. And that's just, you know. It's just basic. But basic. You, what you really need are three things, four things. You need a square. Okay, you need a square. This is a must have for your starter upper box. You're going to need a good glass cutter. Don't skimp on a glass cutter. If you're arthritic or something in your wrist and you don't, then go to your local glass supplier and check out the different cutters that are available. I recommend if you're weak wrist to use what's called a pistol grip cutter. We have those available on our website as well. Or I use the pencil the pencil cutter, it's brass, it's heavy, it feels really good in my hand. You're gonna, the other thing you must have is running pliers for your toolbox. And then you're gonna need a pair of grousing pliers or grosing pliers. Those four things can get you started because let me tell you, you can't move any further until you learn how to cut glass. And Learn how to cut glass on clear window glass from the hardware store, five or six dollars for a 12 by 12. And I'm going to show you a little bit. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. We're going to do a little glass cutting tonight. Yeah, we are. And so I want you to see this. This is clear window glass that we always use. We always use clear window glass in the, in the Q&As because we want you to see it and we want you to hear it, and we want you to understand the properties of it. So those four tools, those four tools will get you started in the stained glass. However, that minimal stained glass kit that we have on our website, that's really where you need to be. And that allows you again, uh, and you know, not to repeat myself, but it does allow you again 
to purchase your own grinder and spend the amount of money that you feel you need to because the grinder, y'all, grinders range from $150 all the way up to five and six hundred dollars. So, you know, we don't want to dictate to you what kind of grinder. And there's always a chance you may find a used grinder at a yard sale or a friend may have one. So keep your eyes right. open for that. What you're going to want to do is learn how to cut glass. You, and all you, right. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. No, go I'm ahead. Sorry. Please, no. You know <laughs> this sorry. even as well or better than I, I do. So I, I just want to make it, I just want to express how glass cutting is the most important thing. And I know you want to jump in and learn as quick as you can and everything. Practice cutting glass first. So, you know, yeah, get a good well, glass cutter. And hey, get a good glass cutter. That's right. Learn how to cut glass on window glass, but watch our videos and learn stained glass at your own pace. We're showing you how to foil. We're showing you how to cut circles. We're showing you how to solder. We're showing you how to grind. We're doing it all in the videos on our website. So don't, you know, don't make sure you check them out. You can learn this stained glass at your own pace. And that is awesome. Did you know, I don't know uh, if you guys, I know a lot of you that watch live probably don't do this, but we have a lot of people that watch, watch the recorded session of the Q and A. And now as we go further into producing these uh, live streams, all of the questions are down at the bottom of the description. Oh, that's awesome. So, so you can see the question. That's yeah, great. You can, go, you can see, you can kind of flip through the question and go right to it and get your answer. So a lot of these questions, I, um, I mean, we've probably got 15, 20 questions on some of those videos and you get a full answer. Right. And if we don't answer fully, come on back and say, hey, right. I know you said this, but what about this? Yeah. And so, you know, like while we're on live, you can just chime in and ask your question, mm -hmm. you know, or, um, you know, that's sometimes like last week we had quite a surprise. Our oldest grandson checked in to say hi to us. That was awesome. And uh, so, but <laughs> he doesn't like you to say things like that. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't tell him who he was. Okay. But anyway, so, hey, this is great time. It's a great time to be answering y'all's questions because the weather's changing. You're moving from indoors out to the garage. Open the windows. Open good the windows. Ventilation. That's right. Prop the garage door open and let's get to work, everybody. Okay. Shows Mary, are coming up. Mary Beth wants to know which brand of table foiler we use. We use Venture. Table foiler. Oh, Excuse table me. foiler, I'm glass sorry. star. Yes. We use the glass star. Yes. And, and we, you know what? We've had that glass. We've had yeah. it for 25 years. It, and it, they, it's the same exact one they sold 25 years same ago. Same one. So that tells you that the design this is flawless. flawless. <laughs> so right. they may have added a few things, but it's basically the same. So, you know, we had find. we had a customer and uh, who, he, and he's no longer with us. He was. Um, um, but he took that glass star. Uh, foiler because I let him borrow it to foil a lamp at home. He took that glass star foiler and you know, he brought me back a wooden one made identical to the glass star. He turned the wood. It's was, it was like he was so a awesome. human 3D cutter machine. <laughs> well, let me tell you exactly his who he was. His brain worked like a 3D. I'll his tell you. His brain worked yeah. like a 3D. Oh. Right. And I'll tell you exactly who he was. What, what's the name he was of the one of the designers of the Apache helicopter for Sikorsky. And that man was one heck of an engineer and he was a German immigrant. And I'll never forget him as long as I live. So, yeah, I, I saw his picture the other day and we'll share that. He used to make the most impeccable lamps. He was so. He. Well, he would take the styrofoam, the warden styrofoam film home, styrofoam form home. And by the class the next following Wednesday night, he had taken the styrofoam form and bent plywood and, and, and burnt it. the pattern into the wooden form. Into the wooden form. So he could use it over and over and over. And he did. He used it over and over and over. And oh my God. I may have a picture of that, but I know I've got his yeah. pictures. Oh, yeah. I do. I saw them the other day. Well, and okay. he was he was one of the main designers of the Apache helicopter for Sikorsky. He Sikorsky, was one of our so. first students and he taught, 
taught us a lot more than, than we, we ever taught, taught him. <laughs> he he congratulated us for teaching him, but no, I mean, I have never, ever. Uh. He was a great man. Okay. There was a question here about a lamp and it was something about how do you remove black patina from a lamp? And I'm not sure, uh, Black patina from a lamp. If it's a copper foil lamp, you know what you do? You steel wool it and it'll come right off. Yeah. Just steel wool it right down till it's shiny. And then either re-patina it or uh, just wax it and leave it alone. Can you burn solder? Is my iron too hot or am I not moving fast enough? Well, you know what? If your if your solder is melting and you're getting little black flakes in it, your iron's too hot and you're not moving fast enough. Yeah, I hope that Turn helps. down the iron. Turn the iron down. You should be working if you have a if you don't have an a wattage controller or a iron temperature controller, get one. They're on our website, no problem. However, if in fact you do have one, you're using it too high to maybe try and compensate for the temperature outside or something. And that's understandable this time of year. However, I would turn it back and, and start, I would start at like six and a half. You got a, you got a dial there, one through zero, one through nine, zero. I would start it at about six and a half and just work your way up until this, until you, when you touch the iron, the solder melts like that. Okay. And then turn it up just a hair bit further and, Keep moving. Don't lollygag or what's the word that I like to use? Dilly dally. Dilly dally. <laughs> Don't willy McNilly it. Just go ahead and solder. Don't play around with it. And keep in it's mind. It's not a paintbrush. That's definitely not a paintbrush. <laughs> well, no, it's not. It's 450 plus degrees. So it's definitely not a paintbrush. And as the weather warms up and you're, if you work in a studio that's really, you know, climate, climate. Yeah you know, variable. Acclimated, yeah. Uh, you may find that you need to turn your iron up or, or down. down. So depending on the weather, yeah. you know, if, if you So if, if you're working with a situation. ceiling fan in the room you're in, guess what? You got to turn it up. But do a solder check. Yeah, you can just do that when you're Do starting. a solder check. And don't forget to wipe your iron off with a damp sponge, not a wet one. You don't want the water boiling when your soldering iron touches it. If it does that, guess what? You might as well set it down and you're not going to be able to solder for another 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh so be goodness. careful. Do, do I have everyone's questions? Have I missed any questions? Did we miss any questions tonight, y'all? And I don't see any questions coming in from our Facebook page, but, um, you know, that's just, we just put that up there. I don't know. Maybe people will watch, maybe not. Okay. Um but we have our YouTube group here, and that's most and important. And that's most important. We have our peeps. Our peeps. Okay. So, hey, do we have any questions? Oh, it's raining in Wichita. Oh. It's raining in Wichita. That sounds like it could be. You know, when I worked for when I worked for Pizza Hut, their home office was in Wichita. Was it? Is it that's still there? That's where the checks came from. Is I don't it still know. there? I don't know. Okay. Back in the day. Yeah, they had a special about Pizza Hut. The other night. Okay. I think, let's see here what we have going on. I think it's time for glass chat. Glass chat? Yeah. I think it's time for glass chat. Uh oh. So, Ed, what in the world have you got there? What in the world have you got there, Ed? Okay, everybody. Are, is everybody still there? It's been five months, 23 days, and just about seven hours. I can turn that camera on if you could see it better there. I don't know. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let me take this. I'll take this. So I, I want everybody to look at this. Guess what it is? This is panel number one of three of our glue chip Oh, yeah, that was a good shot right there. Yay. Let me get it. There we there go. We are. Okay, so now you can see the texture. Y'all. For those of you who have doubts. If, if that have doubts that it came it. out. Well, you know what? We did, a, we did a lot of things wrong, and the main thing we did wrong was 
we it was way the humidity was way too high i think it was almost even rain in that day that it was week. it rained the next day so anyway um this chip right here y'all is just completely there we go is completely awesome and I'm going to tell you why, because it doesn't look like a leaf or frost on the windshield of your car. This is a absolutely just gorgeous pattern. And I'm going to turn it upside down so you can see we only That's did one side. side. That's that side. That we'll be cutting this side. But I want you to see this, y'all. These pieces of glass. Now, the two darker pieces of glass, they turned out as well. However... Sometime during the summer months, and the glass was hot, it must have started raining and it cracked them a little bit. But we're going to square them up because we told you we were going to use this glass in a project, and, and we are. We're using this in our transom glass above our front door inside the glass studio. So I wanted you to see this, though. So we're working on a video. The video we're doing now. Um, of the finished product, yeah, right? The finished product, yeah. Uh, we'll be doing the. Uh, yeah, I we've just almost want... got it finished. Um, Ed has to do a couple more things. Uh, but we want you. We wanted you to know yeah, that we didn't gonna forget be on about the blue you. Chip. It's going to be cool. And several of you have said, "Hey, Ed, Barb, whatever happened to the glue chip project?" Well, <laughs> you know what? Honestly, I forgot about it. Yeah. I honestly did. I, I forgot all about it because we put it outside in an area where the sun would get on it and it finally chipped. I mean, every bit of the, I haven't done anything with the glue. It came off completely. Okay. And it's absolutely beautiful. So it has a, um, yeah. It has a big chip on it. But mostly it has little tiny chips. Yeah. And the other pieces are a little bit different. So we're going to slice those up and they'll be in the video. That's yeah. got a big chip right there. This looks, this right here, it looks like a warrior. Looks like can't a warrior. See. Oh, see there. It? There you can it see. It looks like a warrior sitting in a chair. An aborigine sitting <laughs> in a chair. Look at his hair. Awesome. Okay. So anyway... Hey, y'all, the glue chip did turn out. It turned out the way Ed likes it. This isn't machine made. This is custom made. And if you've got little, little pieces of six by tens like that just laying around in a bunch of different transparent colors, get them sandblasted. Make some windows out of them because it's so unique. You can never re. I can't reproduce that again, and I know Barbara can't. So, Karen likes your haircut. Thanks, Karen. Appreciate <laughs> it, it hon. sharp. Okay, John Golden wants to know if that's a single chip or a double chip. That is a single chip. A double chip is on both sides of the glass. Ray wants to know if you can make different, uh, different textures and forms. Yes. Yeah. So if you're wanting to make different textures and forms, it's all about experimenting. Right. experimenting and keeping notes. We know what we filmed, what we did with this. We know what we did right and, and wrong. wrong and wrong. <laughs> and it's all on film. So if we want to make the same chip again, we know how to do it. Right. Um, a lot of it, a lot of your chipping has to do with the texture of the glass. <laughs> you know, you could use really coarse sand. We used aluminum oxide and you know how smooth that is. That's like you, that's like using pecan shells on uh, pistons or engine blocks. I mean, it's smooth, buddy. Smooth. Yeah. So I can imagine having uh, a little stockpile of different colors. Oh, Barb, I can too, because it's so beautiful. And be able beautiful. to add these in borders for your customers' windows and colors that they like. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't tell a customer, hey, I'll glue chip you some glass, that color, because you never know what's, what's going to happen. That's right. But and if that, you have a little stockpile of it, you can add it in your windows here and there. And you know, I'm looking at this and there are some serious divots taken out of this. Yeah. So it, this is, I mean, that glue, when it pulled away, buddy, it did the trick. I mean, it was a serious, there's some serious divots in that glue chip. <laughs> Uh, we'd like to say a big shout out to Mark Mason hey, of, Mark. Uh, of 
where is Mark? He's from? in Goose Creek. He's in Goose Creek. And uh, he wrote us a real tonight. nice letter. And if you have a chance, uh, uh, say hello to Mark when you're down in Goose Creek. He's got a stained glass studio there. Low country, low country stained glass. Yeah, well, we appreciate that letter, Mark. That's awesome. And it was really a nice letter. And, and it was definitely welcomed. And we look forward. You know, Barbara and I, we do travel out a little bit. So uh, last time we went to Goose Creek was a beautiful ride. And we can can you uh, Ray wants to know can you mix colors when glue chipping? Oh, Mark's here. <laughs> Hi, Mark. Hey. <laughs> um, can you mix colors glue chipping? Uh, I think he might have thought we did that through a color type thing. Oh no, this I, is uh, actually yes. You 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 can you can glue chip up all any different color. colors of glass and just just put the glue chip on and yes. Yes. Yeah, you can glue chip any smooth glass that has been sandblasted. Yeah, any glass. And you know, <laughs> what a great idea, Ray. Some of those lamps you make, buddy, I can see some glue chip accents in them. I can see that. Okay, so um, let's see where we're headed now. Okay, so we have some people just... Uh, tuning into the live stream. If oh, you great. got a question, we're still taking questions. Just put your question in the chat. You bet we are. We're still doing questions. Or in the comments, as they say. We're talking about the glue chip tonight that everybody thought we forgot about, so, which uh, we did. Yeah, we had hoped to have that video out. But uh, unfortunately, we had a little snafu in the filming and Ed got bit by ants. Oh and my god. We got a, a piece of hair in the camera. Well, we so. changed land. We got a new lens for the camera. We changed lens and somehow or another, before I got all this gotten gone, <laughs> one of these got inside between the in the lens. So we had to Oh. So, so, yeah, anyway. And then come to find out, I said during the video I got an itch. And next thing I know, I'm it's in a pile of fire ants. It's all on. Anyway, but we appreciate your patience. And yeah, we're glad to be here tonight. We're glad to, to be guys. here. Yeah. And the, the fire ants didn't get all the way up my fire pants. Thank you to everybody. We look real snazzy tonight. Yeah. Ed got a haircut. So did Barb. Yeah. I got mine cut too. I you know, we hadn't anyway, haven't had a haircut in, in, in a while. Two years, I think. Since yeah. March 17th of 2019. Ray said you gave him some good ideas. Okay. Just wanted to let you know that, Ray. Okay. So you want to do a demo for us? You well, want to do a glass demo? Yeah. Because, you know, Abby's just starting out. I want to show her how important. And, and everybody. You know why? Because not there are a lot of people on our page and on our show every night that really know how to cut glass. And they know, Abby. And I'm just directing this at you because you said <laughs> you're starting out. So I'm not going to, you know, call you Don't up in front of class. Out. I'm not going <laughs> to call you out. I'm not going to do that to you. But I want you to see this square. Okay. So this is my glass cutter. Okay. I want you to see what this square does. Now, I'm going to put this square right here. Now, look how crooked that piece of glass is. Okay. So I want you to keep in mind, remember... Rule number one, when cutting straight lines, pull it to you. Pull the glass cutter oh, to you. Wait a minute. Here we go. Here, wait a minute. Let me get on. I've got, I'm looking at questions. I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. You hear that noise? That should be music to your ears. And the more you do it, it's music to your hardware store because he knows you need more glass. So let me just show you this. These are your running pliers here, Abby. This is what they do. Watch. We're just going to take that and go right down the line. Okay. So that is using your square to cut straight lines. And what that? What do you do in a straight line? You Pull the glass cutter to you. Pull the glass cutter to you. Now, because we're going to cut a pattern, we're going to push. 
the glass cutter away from us so that we can see the pattern. Everyone, please listen to that noise. And you'll only hear it consistent like that on window glass. However, because your colored glass are stacked up and the colors are stacked, just remember, it doesn't matter if you can hear it here, here, or here. When you're cutting glass, everybody, again, please keep the same pressure whether you can hear it rolling or not, because I promise you, it's working. You just may not be able to hear it. So there we go. Just a little bit, just a little bit of finesse with the glass and everything will be okay. Okay, demonstrate to Ray again in squaring the glass, pulling or pushing. Okay. When cutting straight lines, Ray, we're gonna, let me get this, we're gonna pull. Okay, we're going to pull. Pull straight down and away, just like that. Okay, if we're cutting, uh-oh, I must have sprung a leak. <laughs> <laughs> if we're cutting patterns, Ray, we want to we want to push the glass cutter and follow our pattern line, just like that. Okay. Push to cut patterns, pull to cut straight lines. What a beautiful way. So why do you pull day. and why do you push? Well, the reason I pull is because it's much easier to cut a straight line rather than pushing it away from you. The reason I push my patterns is because if you try to pull the pattern, your your entire wrist, the hand, your palm, all of this is in the way. You can't see, you can't see it. So you drive the pattern and you pull the straight lines. Once you get used to it, you'll find it's really You'll easy. find it. You'll you'll love it. You'll love it. Great question. But you Great can't question. but you can't like you know you can't like put a thing here and go like that. You know why? Because you end up wasting a lot of glass because you can't you can't keep the same pressure that. start to finish. Do that again. You can't do what? You can't keep oh, the same pressure the start same, to finish right. as you can pull it. Okay. You must pull. Okay. I, I, you don't have to. That's just my way of thinking. That's what Ed says. That's what Ed says. How's the weather? <laughs> no. Oops. Oh. Where'd that come from? I don't know where that came from. And now... Do it again. <laughs> if you ring that bell, if you see that bell, ring that bell, you'll get notified when we go live and you'll get notified when we have a new video coming out. It'll go right, right to your mailbox. And then like Pat Co, please set all the alarms in your house for seven, <laughs> for 6.55 and 55 seconds. Yeah, there you so go. you're sure every to be on time. In, every alarm in your house, just like Pat. Hey, and you know what? It was really good talking to you the other morning, Pat. So I just um, thought I'd let you know. AK Martinez says there's a tornado watch there. Oh, no. Is Please that be in... careful and, and uh, make sure you've got shelter nearby. Oh, that's what's heading our way. Safe. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's what's heading our way for tomorrow, late tonight and tomorrow evening. John Golden says he has lots of Band-Aids in his new toolbox. I know. And I do, too. You know what? Barbara got me a brand new box. I I thought I did. What hey, happened? you know if you're if you're not bleeding, you're not working. That's right. You're not. Okay, so what? Uh, we have a little bit of news this week. You, now, everyone, you can go to the website. You can oh, go yeah, to conwayglass.com right. rdrv. And you could submit your questions ahead of time. So just in case you can't make it to the live stream 
and you have a question you want to um, ask, just submit your question and we'll go ahead and put it on the upcoming live stream. And then you can play the rerun and you have your question. Yeah. Answered. And, if, and if you'll do that, it'll make it a lot easier on Barb and I, because we can just print out your question. We'll have them right here. And then like Barb said, you just catch it up on the repeat on the live stream because in case you're not home or something, you know, you could be busy. <laughs> But feel free to come to the live stream Please and ask do. your questions. That just makes it, it oh, we just put that there for a convenience for you because I did have a question come in this week about, oh, I wanted to submit a question. So there you go. We did it for you. And we and anytime you have a, uh, any questions or comments or suggestions, yeah, please, please get in touch with us right there on that sheet because that's the RDRV submit question sheet right. and that comes right to my desk right you know and if we're not doing something then we, we need to, to do something that that you'd like us to do don't be afraid to ask yes yeah. do we love to hear no, we don't you. know unless you ask so that's right we do not know unless you ask and the other new thing is we're we're also doing lives on facebook now but um and we do have a new video coming out and it's start to finish on the glue chipping process so Finishing uh, we, up. You'll be, we're finished. Barbara's finishing it up and getting it edited right now. And, uh, yep. Getting that hair. So we were very fortunate that none of us really got tore up by those fire ants uh, the other day. But, anyway. yeah. He stood right in them. <laughs> Didn't even notice it. Stood right in them. Mm, it was crazy. So, but I'm happy to be here. I got my, uh, still walking with a cane a little bit. And we we're walking around the block in our neighborhood now. So that's awesome. It's not very far. It's about it's about six or seven hundred yards. But um AK, could you submit those questions again? That that uh, I'm sorry. I'm talking. No, to, go ahead. What'd you say? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I was just explaining to everybody that I can walk six or seven hundred yards now. He can. I'm trying my darndest to get away from this cane and, and get back let in Let me it. tell you, he's lost. How many pounds have you lost? Almost 50. What? Really? Almost 50 pounds. Can you believe that? I'm so proud of him. It's all good. We're doing it together. So that's. The... AK, could you, AK Martinez, could you please resubmit those questions? I, I think that email may, may have got buried. Because we had so many coming in and it was hard for me to keep up with everything while we were closed. Because I, I was getting zero. Oh, pounds. yeah. You know, because we, <laughs> we we closed the store for six weeks. And yeah, so and, we're uh, back to it. But yeah, I'm just catching up. So if you go ahead and submit those questions like one, two, three, four, whatever, we'll do them next week on the live stream. Please. OK. Do. And yeah. then if you can't come, you can get the repeat and. Because all the questions will be noted. And we're going to thank you in advance for those <laughs> questions. Because nothing helps us more than to know what, what our students need to learn. Right. And we may need some sort of apparatus here to answer a question. And if we know the, the question in advance, that gives us time to get it ready so that we can give you the very demo, best. If we need to. Yeah, yeah. And the very best answer to your question that we can provide you. Yeah, and a demo if we need to. Yeah, if we need to do a demo, then guess what? It's demo time. Yes. We're, we're happy to cut glass and show you different things. And you know, Barbara and I were talking. If you think about it, there's only there's only three things of uh, ways to cut glass. You're going to cut a straight line. You're going to cut a pattern. You're going to cut a circle. And guess what? That's it, folks. And they're all done but with the same tool. Tools, plural. Your hands and your glass cutter, and those of you that use a saw, which is okay. Okay, there was a question, mm -hmm. and Pauline, for some reason, I'm not sure what that, let me go up. Uh, I can't tell what that question is. Let me put it up here. I think there's, I have a question, you're going to be doing the blue shipping episode. I don't think that that is us, the blue, uh, I'm not sure what that question is. I think Colleen. she's confused. It's glue chipping. Students need to, my name is Colleen and I have a question doing some windows. Put your question in there and I'll be happy to answer it, Colleen. Um, yeah, Ray, fire our ants hurt. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Way to go losing now uh, 50 pounds. That's a Thank half you, a person. Ray. I know. I enjoyed being by his side and I enjoyed uh, teaching him good habits of eating. <laughs> and he's doing so good and I he's know. enjoying it. And he can eat all his favorite foods. He just has to eat less of them. Yeah, That's and the it's just thing. like once a once a month, I get a treat and I get to go to one of my favorite and have my favorite meal. It's all a bunch of vegetables, but it's my, one of my favorite meals. Uh, Patrick wants to know if we wax our uh, polish our glass when we're done with it. Uh, what only do on we the use? copper foil. Yeah, only on the copper foil. Yeah, on the on the lead windows, we just we polish them with uh, our uh, our acid brush and our, you know, polish it and wash it and, uh, and our glazing compound. And I tell you, we did it, you know, I think we told you last week, we finished up those 13 cabinet doors. Well, I'm gonna tell you something, after we puttied them and everything, and you know how it's kind of oily a little bit, we put them bad boys in the sink under some hot water with some Dawn dishwashing detergent. And they were glistening when they came out of that water. So, and they were beautiful in the cabinets today, Barb. So, yeah, on the copper foil, you can buy special um, polish to put on your copper foil. But most people that do stained glass for a period of time find a non abrasive turtle wax. A non abrasive wax, a uh, car wax will work perfectly fine. Yeah, a liquid wax, not a paste, but a right. liquid. If you use a liquid wax, you're good to go. Just make sure you get it off because, you know, when it dries, if it's any of it's there, guess what? It's white. So. Yeah. Yeah. So um, do we have any other questions here? Comments, suggestions, complaints, any complaints? No complaints from the peanut section, I hope. I hope everyone is good tonight because... Uh, well, it's a it beautiful really feels evening. good being here, and it's so good to see everyone. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. And don't forget, we opened up the page on our on the website so that you can fill out questions there during the week, so that you can watch them on the repeat, so that you don't miss the questions. You know, if you can't make it, we're still happy to answer your questions. Then you can catch us on the flip flop. Yes. And we are live every Monday night. John was asking, are we live? Every Monday yes, night. Yes, we're live every Monday night. We took some time off. We went on vacation in January, and we took some time off for Ed's hip surgery. But we are back. And uh, we are back every Monday night. Every Monday Every night. Monday night. And uh, we're back. We're probably even going to bother you when we're on vacation now because we found a We got all that camera. straightened out. <laughs> we found the software we needed to go live. So we're good. Yeah. You know, this is like a, a little bit of a learning curve. We've, we've been doing this for a little under a year now and uh, for a little over a year, right? A little over a year. Yeah. And you know what? We've, we've invested a little bit of money, but you know what we've really invested in is your friendship. And we appreciate that very much. Yes, we do. And uh, okay. So do we have any questions? Everyone. Don't forget, glass cutting is the most important process of this of the stained glass process. It is. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything on the. Uh... So we are coming out with that video on glue chipping. Did you do anything on rapid resizer? I know you're working I'm, on. Something, I'm taking but... something home tonight that I thought I had at home, and I'm going to work on it and see how that works. Because it's going to be some paintings that you need to do, and I'm going to get them ready. For well, you. why don't you let me do the work then? Then I'll let you do it. <laughs> why don't I let why Barbara don't you do, do it? The work? I think I can figure it out. I think you can. Okay, Excuse we'll have me. an update next week then. All right. Haven't had a use for it yet, but hopefully we can. Yeah, I, I've got plenty to do. I'm not going to make more things for me to do. I'm trying to work things into things that I'm already doing. <laughs> so we are going to be painting these paintings in these windows in this <coughs> particular window. So we'll go ahead and get those parts ready. Linda wants to know, Linda. Hey, Julie. Hey, we got some Facebook friends here too. Okay. Linda wants to know if we can do one-on-one -on -one classes to learn. 
I, I don't think Ed has the time for that, Linda. Mm, yeah, I don't really. But uh, we'll. You know, we've been talking about it, but I, I don't see it happening in 2022 yet. So. Not yet. Not yet. But, you know, as soon as we. As soon as we. Miss you too, Linda. As soon as we do, we will. Um, let you know it's just you know to teach one-on-one -on -one, number one a lot of times it gets almost cost prohibitive okay but I that's not could. i'm not saying any you know never say never never say never that's right i mean i want you know i'd, I'd love to be back one-on-one -on -one with my customers again congratulations karen she said denver has lost 80 pounds and she's lost 50 Way to go. It's awesome, isn't it? I lost 40. Almost 40. I think I've lost. Almost yeah, right 40. at 40. So. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, so together, Barbara and I are getting ready to drop 100 pounds. <laughs> yeah, there's a story in there somewhere. We're just not sure what how to tell it. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we should do a. Hey, what are you talking about, Linda? Linda Baddor. Ah, yeah, Linda. Hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> and Julie Summers, she's here too. Our Facebook friends. Our oh, Facebook thank y'all. Friends are joining us, and we're happy to see them. Yeah, that's awesome. And Pauline, put your question up because I don't think that I think there's some typos. I think that uh, spell check took over your <laughs> took over your question and scrambled the words around. So uh, check that question and see. See if he can get that in there. Christy's here too. She's a little bit late, but she's here. That's okay. Great. We appreciate it. Yeah. We appreciate everything. Any other questions? We're here for you. I'm adjusting my running plier gap there so that if we need to cut some more glass, we can. Give but him another good. glass demo. You want to? I think I'm about, let's see, I'm not out of glass. Oh, how can you be? You're in a glass shop. How can you be out of glass? <laughs> okay, that's good. No? Yes? No? What in the world is that? Oh, this is good. Here we go. Here, this is a good demo right here. Hang on. Right there. What in the world is that? So we're going to just cut this. Now, if I was pulling that, okay, you see that? Oh, where am I supposed to be? What? 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 I can't see it. So this is what we're doing. So we just ran this out. Now we're going to run this. Okay, so now we're going to take our index finger, knuckle, our thumb, and we're going to pull down right behind it. We're going to chase that score right around. Now, while I'm going to put my running pliers on upside down, and guess what happened? My glass pulls right apart. Cool. Do you see that? Cool. I like that. So what does it do when you turn your running pliers upside down? Well, breaks that's a good question, Barb, because like I've explained to everybody before, when you when you cut glass and you, you're cutting a circle or you're cutting glass, period, that has some sort of a radius in it, you're going to have to, because the glass will break on two sides, just like when we did the, there's a new video out when we're cutting a large glass circle. Yeah. <clears throat> when you hear that pop on the second side, then you know that it's ready to come apart. This way, when I turn right. my running pliers upside down, I'm I'm taking it from this right. to this, and it comes right out. So it's a good it's a good answer. So if you if you're having trouble getting something a piece of glass out of your score, mm -hmm. turn your running pliers over. Don't squeeze them real hard. Just listen to it. Bonk. Go figure. It's a simple How solution. How you waited 35 years to tell me that trick? 
I thought you knew it. <laughs> I thought you knew it. I didn't. Okay. That's all right. I forgive you. Okay. okay. Well, now you know. Okay. All right. So do we have any more questions? You know, and everybody else knows now. I know. I think that's a great little hack, right? Yeah. Ray said that's a good demo. He now sees why you push and pull. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense, doesn't it? And I never really thought about it before. So these live streams are for my benefit as well. <laughs> well, I hope that they help everyone, Barb, you know. Thank you. And including you. Yeah. Because we never have time to talk about the best practices, right? I mean, I watch you, but it doesn't really make sense to me sometimes why you do something a certain way. Right. It's just like right now. I was just scratching my ear. Now, why I did it that way, I don't know. I don't know either, but your glasses are a little bit crooked. Okay. How's that? Is that that's better? good. Yeah, that's good. That better? You look my, great. My glasses look, great. look good, everybody. So doesn't his haircut look good? My my hairdresser called it a gentleman's, gentleman's cut. cut. And I thought, hmm, boy, that sounds pretty good. So look up there in the camera and give him a big smile. Away. Show him how handsome you are. Dude, look at that. Look at that. He's got a face for YouTube. I've got a face <laughs> that only a mother could love. And, and no, your Never mind. Okay. Do you cut your glass in a way to prevent carpal tunnel syndrome? Do you, how do you cut your glass in a way to prevent carpal tunnel syndrome? Anytime you're doing any repetitive cutting and you start experiencing pain, right. stop. Right. I would, you know, carpal tunnel is caused by the muscle that goes through the hole in your wrist and activates your thumb like that. So you have to find a different way to work so that you're not creating pain. So And the way I hold my glass cutter is like that right there. There's no way in the world that I can create any pain. And after 43 years of cutting glass, I cut glass the same exact way. Just like that. Those are the position of my three fingers. I'll turn sideways so you can see it. That's it right there, y'all. Aurora said she's glad to see us back. Yeah, that carpal tunnel syndrome is a big problem. Um, but you're going to have to talk to your doctor and you're going to have to take care of self-love, self-care. Yeah, it, it, it may be you need to tape your wrist up. Yeah, there may be things that you, know, you can do. You might want to get that sports tape and, and pull that muscle there back to here and pull that one back to here and then start cutting glass. Karen wants to know if we're doing any craft fairs. No, we're not, Karen. Nope. We, we no longer do craft fairs at this time. Uh, in the future, we might. But at this time, we are not doing craft fairs. I'm sorry. Um, only because we are so busy, we don't have time. Plus, we don't have the inventory. Right. And we have to, like, next <clears throat> next week, we're traveling all week to pick up jobs, complete jobs, install jobs. We'll be on the road three, yeah. out of, three or four days we're a week. We're working in week. North Carolina and South Carolina doing restoration. So we're in and out a lot. Uh, we're by appointment only. Our retail store is closed. Uh, but we have plenty of business and uh, we're, we're very loving life. Fortunate. And we hope you guys are too. And we hope you're enjoying your craft and you're learning what you need to know here. And you keep coming back every week. That's this right. Is really important to us. That's right. And I think this we're Monday a, night I think is important. We're serving a purpose. Yeah, Monday night's important to us. Like today, we worked. We well, you know what? We work every day, but a lot of days it's not like work. It's because you know what? We love what we do. So technically it's not like work at all. Christy said she loved the back shot of the back porch. Thank you, Christy. After Ed got attacked by those ants and I found a hair in my video camera, <laughs> <laughs> I had to go to my house and get some um, relaxation, relaxation on. on. So I thought sharing that might help the rest of you that are out there maybe having a bad day. 
I should have put it on a loop so you could just look at it. But it sure does uh, help to have a place to go to relax when you're having a bad day. And that's where I go. We take two minutes and blow the pollen off right now and have a seat. <laughs> yeah, I'll be glad when that pollen's that's gone. Good. Have you done a video pertaining to repairing a damaged piece? Yes, Julie, we have. We have several videos online about repairing damaged glass. We do. Damaged and, windows, uh, windows huh? and lamps. If you go to the YouTube channel and go to the playlists, and I believe all the restoration repairs are in one playlist, and you can just watch one right after the other. Or you can go to the live streams and look at the questions that were answered, flip through them and see if there's anything on about repairs there. But mostly on the playlist, you'll find Yeah. Those. Oh, yeah. We've done several uh, on repairs, how to repair a lamp, how to repair you know, a window. Uh, could we show more on installing windows and doors? Um, we Only when we do it. We in, I think we've had several window mm -hmm. uh, installations on there. Uh, door, basically a window or a door installation. Gosh, there's so many applications. Um, when we're doing that particular thing, yes, we do we'll show video. that. Yeah, because, um, yeah, I mean, we can't. We can't just make it up. We have to be able to actually do it. Yeah. So we, uh, the biggest one we did was just a little while ago. Yeah. Recently. Yeah. Recently. So, so you can check out the installation of the Live Oak Project. That's three different videos on our on our video library. And and we will be showing more on installing doors and uh, sure. Well, we'll windows. be installing some windows next as, week. As we'll we be, do. Them. Yeah, we'll be yeah. videoing the windows that we'll be putting in in North Carolina. And just lots of different things going on. And I'm so glad we got that hair out of our lens. <laughs> yeah, me too. Okay. All right. I'm just trying to read the questions. Okay, we got one. I think Julie said she just did her first repair and uh, she's glad that she can have something to review on our website yeah just check that out yeah do you it. learn by doing and you learn from other people and i think it's a combination of doing it and watching it on video and asking questions right. and um yeah we're happy to and help. being able to actually see it done too a lot of times that helps people some people are visions you know they have to be able to see it to do it so christy um uh, I'm not sure what you're looking for. Up close techniques for install. Christy would like to see. Only when we're installing something, we can't. Well, you know, we, you know, we, we did a video on cabinet door installs a couple weeks ago. Uh, January. In January. Yeah. And that, or it may have been longer. Was it January? Yeah. I don't know, but it was uh, that's easy when we did panel, that sample, right? easy stained glass panel. In that video, we show how we installed that panel in that cabinet door. That's basically it's a pretty much same thing. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna to install a window, you're gonna take a molding off, you're gonna put a window in, and you're gonna put the molding back on. That's pretty much it. I mean, it's kind of. I think that um, most, actually, most applications are the same. It's just a different material and different type of molding yeah and a different you can have a different molding with each application with metal and with wood right and whether it's a new window or an old window right or an, or that's going to be window. the difference so how to do that in one video and cover a lot of different things that might be a mishmash of a couple different <clears throat> right videos. but like this window behind us it, when it showed up, it was in a frame, but it wasn't in a frame good enough to even think about putting it right back in it after spending a lot of money and time restoring it. What, what, which one are you talking this about? This one here behind us. Oh, yeah. New frame. New Brand new frame. Boom. Wooden frame. The oak wood that we show you, that we use, that's on our, on our uh, YouTube channel, on the video, we show you how to make a frame. Actually, we show you in detail how to make a wooden frame for your stained glass work, don't we, bro? Yeah, it's called Let's Frame It. Let's Frame It. 
But I think Christy is concerned with her techniques for install. So, you know, installs are case by case. No two are the same. None of them are identical. Especially with stained glass. I mean, with insulated glass and window glass, yeah, they're all the same. But with stained glass, you never know what you're going to. Well, first of all, when you go to measure that job, the first thing you need to think about is how are you going to put that window in? Yeah, that should be your first. Your first thought after when you measure that job and you're at your customer's house, how am I going to put this window in? Don't take the job until you know how you're going to install it because. Right. <clears throat> that's a very important aspect and it can change your sizes. And you know, it, it, sometimes it's good for your install to actually hire a glass company to do your install. Probably going to cost you upwards of $135 for a service call to have them install it. But if you're unsure about your method, their methods are tried and true. And but they need to know how to measure it for the glass company to install. It. Right. So you would need to actually meet the glass company out there or befriend someone that works in the glass industry. Yeah. Because right, there's so many different applications. I mean, I, I could boggle your mind with all the different applications. But we'll keep that in mind, Christy, as we <clears throat> as we make new videos, you know, can we well, show as we make new windows because you know we have we have that job coming up. With just, you know, all the clear window glass and the diamonds and everything, that's going to be a definite way to install one way of installing windows once we make those patterns. Ray just gave you a really good compliment of all the channels. Ray said of all the channels he watches, he anticipates ours the most. Really? He Ray, said, that's awful do kind. do a wonderful job instructing video and narrating. Thank you, Ray. We that's awful kind that. of you, my friend. <clears throat> and Karen seconds that. All right. What are you two doing? <laughs> You're ganging up on us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. All right. This okay. So Christy said she did that for the coral reef panel she did in Wilmington. Yeah. So make friends with your local glazer. Yeah. Yeah. They can help you. Okay, guys. We have been on here for over an hour tonight, and that's. That's, That's a awesome lot for us. So I'm going to take Barbara and get her something to eat tonight because you, you know it's Monday night. You know we don't hungry. cook at 8:30. I'm sorry, I just don't do it. But we do. I don't even know where we're going, but we're going to grab a bite to eat, and it's going to be good because we've been good all day today. Uh, Vicky. I just want to show this because this is uh, interesting. This is a good uh, kind of a question, kind of a thought thing. Um, I've heard two thoughts on framing with lead. Use H came so you can use it to anchor the window and don't use H came because it will sag. Any thoughts? Use flat H came on the outside perimeter of your window. If you're putting it in a wooden sash or back into a wooden sash, yes, you can use that edge. Drive your carpet tack through the lead into the wood behind it, and you'll be installing the window that just exactly the way they did it in the 1800s and the 19 early 1900s. And I still get windows with carpet or upholstery tacks in the lead on the outside perimeter now. So it's kind of neat, isn't it, Laura? Yeah, and you don't have to install it like that. Uh, as long as you stretch your H lead and use it on the outside of the perimeter, it will not sag. No. Uh, if your window is well built, that's the important thing. Stretch the, your outside yeah. lead. Yes. And if the window is three by three or a little bit less, it needs to have some rebar on it. So check out the video on how to apply your reinforcing rod. Um, but... You can install that window with push points and molding as well. You don't have to use tacks. The reason we use the H came on the outside is so that when we get to the job, if that window, I mean, it it may be square, but a lot of times it's just a little bit out of square and you know you don't want to trim that glass down. So that H came on the outside gives you a lot of room to just trim it down and make it fit in there just perfect just take a little a wood a micro wood plane 
shave the lead down, put it right in the opening, put your push points in, and either apply your new molding or use your glazing compound to glaze it. Okay, we got our loyal groupies here now. We've got a name for us, our loyal groupies. And um, so they're all here. Ray, I don't know what I'm having for dinner. I had a really good salad last week, and I can't, what was it? Are we cooking tonight? Oh, it's 8.30. Oh, it's 8.30? Almost. No, it's 8 o'clock. It's 8.09. It's 8.09. It's 8 okay. We're going to go eat some supper. I'm going to have a salad. And I am too. He, I think he's going to have a salad too. And I might have a glass of wine, maybe. I don't yeah. know. Um, but it's so good to see you guys. It's good tonight. to see everybody tonight. And uh, and thank you all for the comments on my hair. <laughs> I told Barbara, I, I was kind of hoping nobody would even notice I got a haircut. But oh, thank you. please. <laughs> we noticed. <laughs> Yeah, we that noticed. other stuff was a little wild, wasn't it? Yeah, you look so handsome. I Thank like you, it. honey, for okay. all your comments. Okay, so um, we're going to see you guys next week on RDRV Glass Studio Q&A, Monday nights at 7 o'clock. Don't forget to listen for your bell to ring. we got a new video coming out. Okay, guys, we'll see you next week. We love you. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in. Good night. Bye-bye. Let's see if it ended. It's not ending. Okay.